Hey friends, welcome back. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but this is life, right? Sometimes life gets in the way. If you're new here, I'm Jen, single mom artist and entrepreneur, and this channel is all about building a life that you love. Today I want to talk about how to handle rejection as an entrepreneur, because I think um, one of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur is dealing with rejection, dealing with bad days, dealing with the lows that sometimes come with being a business owner, and those moments where you just want to quit. So if you follow my channel at all, then you know that very recently I had my worst market ever, and it should have been my best market ever. I went into it with really high expectations and really high hopes, and they were completely dashed. And there were moments when I was sitting behind my booth at that market, thinking to myself, what am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? Those thoughts can be really hard to deal with and really upsetting and really heartbreaking. So today, well, let's talk about how you handle that rejection? How? What do you? What do you do in the face of that really terrible, awful, bad day? And how do you make it into something positive? I've got my trusty little cup today, and we're going to get into it. My first tip is to try and reframe that rejection, bad day, terrible outcome as a learning opportunity. Now. Sometimes that's easier than others, right? But you can ask yourself, okay, this was valuable feedback, what can I learn from it? So say a client tells you they hate your product and they tell you why. Okay, that rejection stinks. But it's valuable because they may give you some really good insight as to reasons why maybe other people don't like that product as well. And you can use that feedback to redesign it. You can ask yourself how you can improve your approach next time. Or how you can improve the product itself for next time. Or you can ask yourself, what strengths did I demonstrate during this experience? So in, in um, the context of my really terrible, awful, bad market, I was resilient. I battled on, I did the hard things, I didn't give up, and that matters, right? So maybe that's a win, I didn't give up, I battled on. So okay, that makes that rejection, that terrible, awful, bad day, a little less terrible and awful, right? Because I did something amazing. Reframing the experience will help you to gain resilience and be less rattled and less affected going forward. Now the second thing you, that you must do is to build a support network. Have those people that you call when you're having that really bad, terrible, rotten day. And you can say, I'm having a really bad, terrible, rotten day. And they can say, hey, Jen, you've got this. You are amazing. Look at what you just did. Now, how do you find that support network? You can join entrepreneurship groups or forums that have other entrepreneurs who understand your struggles because they're going through the exact same ones. You can seek out a mentor who understands your specific challenges. A mentor is a great option. It's sometimes hard to find a mentor. I don't have one currently. Um, I'm looking for one. <laughs> so if you happen to stumble upon my channel here and, and you want to help mentor me, reach out because I'd love that. Um, that said though, a mentor is a really great option. I would love to have a mentor. I would love to be a mentor. So don't be afraid to reach out to someone who you look up to and respect and ask for their help. Maybe they'll say yes. My third tip is to make sure that you're celebrating the small wins because in between the highs and the lows, there's all of this like really good days, really bad days, but there's a lot of in between. There's a lot of little bitty small wins like, hey, I just finished that big project. Hey, I 
just had a great sales call. I had a successful day of juggling my business and my personal life as a single mom. Those are all small wins and you have to celebrate them. I make a point to like make a little note each day at the end of the day of my small wins for that day because those small little things, they build an ad over time and recognizing that the little things matter makes those big disappointments a whole lot less significant. My tip number four is to practice self-care. Now, I know that I talk about self-care a lot, but it's so incredibly important, especially if you're a single mom like me who's also working a day job and running a business. That is a lot going on all at once. You have got to take care of you. It's so easy to put yourself last and put everybody else first, but you have to take care of you. So whether that is exercising regularly, whether that is meditating, whether that is getting a massage, whether that's engaging in a hobby or activity that you really love, or even just spending quality time with your kids. All of those things are self-care. If it lights you up, if it makes you feel good, if it helps you be a better human, it's self-care and make sure you do it. Oh, and sleep. I personally am really bad about getting enough sleep. I'm not a good sleeper. I have crazy insomnia. Sleep is so important though. Make sure that you are trying, you're doing everything that you can to get a good night's rest because that too is self-care. Tip number five is to set realistic goals and track your progress and so you can celebrate it. So once you set one goal, you need to break it down into teeny tiny little goals to help you reach that big goal. Because when you break it down into teeny tiny goals, you get to celebrate every one of those teeny tiny goals and it makes it smaller, more manageable bites. It's easier to actually accomplish. You can stay motivated because you know you're winning every time you accomplish a little goal and you get to celebrate all of those little wins along the way. It also means that you can adjust your strategy as you go so that you never feel overwhelmed. And celebrate, celebrate, celebrate every milestone that you hit. And my last tip, tip number six, is to remember why you are doing this. Are you doing this to build a better life for your family? Are you pursuing a passion? Is this something that you love? Are you trying to build financial independence? Are you doing all of those things? Is all of those at once? Remembering why you are doing this when you're sitting in that cold, rainy booth wondering, why am I doing this with my life? Yeah, that was me. Remembering the actual why makes a big difference. It makes you go, okay, it's time to regroup. This was a bad day. This was a bad experience. But they aren't all bad days. They aren't all bad experiences. I'm gonna learn from this, I'm gonna grow from this, and I'm gonna move forward. Knowing why you're doing this is incredibly helpful in making that switch in your brain. I was hoping I'd have some really sage words of advice to wrap this video up with, but in the end, you literally just have to decide to keep going. And I know that that can be really, really hard. I wish there was a magic bullet for motivation when things get tough, but there just isn't. So what did I do when I had that really terrible, horrible, rotten market? Well, I allowed myself to feel sorry for myself for one day. One day, that's all I got. One day to feel sorry for myself. And then it was time to suck it up and get back to work. Because if we don't keep moving forward, we will never get where we want to be. And I know in my heart of hearts that one rotten market is not the end of the world. It's not the worst thing that could ever happen. It's fr so frustrating when that one rotten market was the market you expected to be your best one of the year. That is a hard pill to swallow. It is. If you weren't around, my market was so rotten because Helen, Hurricane Helen, uh, made it rain all weekend long. So we just didn't have the shoppers for the event. 
But when I sit back and think of all the devastation that was caused by Helen and all of the people who lost everything, man, I have nothing at all to be upset about because I lost what should have been one good market. That's it. There's another good market coming. There just is. I'm not rebuilding my entire life from scratch like a lot of people are trying to figure out how to do right now. So I'm grateful that a really bad rotten day is just a really bad rotten day. It's not the end of everything, right? It's not. So perspective, perspective helps too. I didn't make that one of my tips. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, tip number one was change your perspective. Perspective helps, it really does. All right, I'm gonna go. You guys have a great day. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that this helped. I hope that if you've had a really bad, dirty, awful, terrible, rotten day, I know there's some part of that is a book title, but I, and I'm not getting it right, and I know that. <laughs> if you've had one of those really bad, terrible, dirty, rotten days that made you wanna quit, what did you do to overcome it? Tell us in the comments so that we can all benefit from your knowledge. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you next time.